Hello and welcome to another open source live code hangout. Today we will be working on the Western Friend website. I'm at a little bit of a pause. I've just written several tests, unit tests that are now passing and giving us more confidence in the code. And I need to step back into writing importer code so that we can import content from Drupal to the Wagtail CMS. I'm going to essentially conduct a little experiment here. The problem is that in between the sort of parsing of the content and instantiating these classes that are internal wagtail greenfield blocks, I lose some visibility in the code. I'm not so certain that we're um, importing the content correctly. I, we may lose some some data, such as embedded video uh, images, like inlined images, for example, or paragraph text with pull the quote. I want to have transparency that from parsing this uh, CSV file into at least the Python memory, we, we're not losing anything so that I, I can inspect the data, run tests against it, make sure that all the strings basically match like the URL of an image or paragraphs in a rich text field. From the CSV into Python memory as dictionaries or tuples, uh, basic primitives, uh, or perhaps some kind of um, data class that I'll define, we don't lose anything. We All the data comes into Python's memory. We're good up to that point. I want to have like 100% confidence uh, as well, 90% confidence, as much as our tests can cover. And uh, acknowledging that the data are somewhat diverse. These are basically rich text uh, in blobs of HTML that can have varying structure and depth. I, so I have to perform a more comprehensive audit of the CMS data to get all the edge cases out. But nonetheless, the things are visible. Then once it's in Python memory as basic dictionaries or uh, instances of a data class, I can parse it into blocks, which is where I lose some visibility. At least I don't know how the wagtail block internals work to get a plain string representation out. I've tried, but couldn't figure out a way. This is an experiment. Take it or leave it. Uh, if, I, if it doesn't succeed, then I'll just chalk it up to, um, you know, an attempt in a learning. But this one thing I hope to learn here is how to use these, um, what are called design patterns, software design patterns, that are essentially known um, patterns we find in a lot of code bases where we're repeating the same process or have similar structures. And that these now have names that we can refer to them as, such as factory or adapter. You know, even in real life, we have factories that make things like widgets or forks or, you know, factories that you put raw materials in and you get something out. So that's a concept that's commonly known. And it, we actually use that all throughout our software. Another pattern is an adapter where you have one interface and a tool that can, or two interfaces basically and you need to plug in information from one to another. You know, you've, you, if you've traveled and you've tried to plug in electronics in different countries, uh, you might have needed an adapter for your um, your wall plugs. Uh, so this is also a common pattern in reality, and as such, it has parallels in software design. This is so these design patterns are giving us names of things that are common conventions. I'm going to try this experiment. And naming things is important. So I want to have these, not only to name them to communicate to my future self or other people what I'm trying to do, but also to help me think about the what I'm trying to do a little bit more uh, accurately. So I'm in a branch, we're going to refactor to design patterns. I should say this is all uh, sort of spawned by a, a prompt, a GPT-4 conversation that I've had. I, I wanted an intermediate representation of this data that I could run tests against. I didn't know, that seems like that's a big wordy phrase. I didn't quite know if there was a more succinct way of saying intermediate representation. Uh, it turns out there's probably not, or at least the way I described it, didn't give GPT-4 much 
to go with. So essentially I, my intermediate representation is we've got raw HTML strings. We're gonna have some kind of form like dictionaries in between before instantiating classes where again, we lose that visibility. I can inspect a Python dictionary, run tests you know, and assertions against those values in that dictionary. That's at least very familiar for me. Whereas these wagtail classes are, they're not so familiar and I don't know how to run some assertions that I need to check, like the content of strings or the URL of an image or maybe the image file name. I'm just having a bit of block there. So again, I'm just gonna go to a more primitive representation. Um, there's not a symbol word for that, but then I described the problem a bit more. So I'm coming from HTML, it looks like this, and I'm gonna come, create kind of a, this intermediary uh, dictionary, intermediate, intermediary dictionary uh, that has a block type, which is rich text and the content, which would be a paragraph in this case. There's also image blocks and stuff, which I didn't mention here. So I said, what are the design patterns that I could apply here? Uh, GPT gave me several design patterns in re return. And in particular, highlighted the factory and adapter patterns and so i just asked for a code example which is also really helpful and notice that it also inferred that i, I could be potentially dealing with images image blocks um, so either it has accessed a previous um, conversation where i've been going through these kind of wagtail um, refactoring i'm looking for the conversation i don't see it uh, but uh, here it is nonetheless um, or if it just knows enough about HTML that it knows images are common. So here we have some pseudocode and I'll just be following this more or less today. And it has even um, some pseudo blocks, uh, which may or may not be useful. I'll have to think about how, how to exactly adapt this code to our context. So let's hop over to the code real quick. So if I add And if I open up this other, so one thing I was watching a video on using Copilot, if you open up another sort of file in memory, I think Copilot, it gives Copilot a hint that you're kind of aiming at this. The original parse body blocks, except a list of generic block objects. Okay, this is really interesting. Place for gathering successive items or text value. Okay, we're just gonna step through it. Suggesting I use blank spaces in a way by not outputting. Here I think it's suggesting I use a blank space. Try. pair space for vitamin soup find all and add, that's a bit more complicated so basically it's constructed this whole body wow And it's basically done the work here. So we'll need to import this extract pull quotes, which. Already exists and already has tests. And then we'll import these beautiful soup. BS4 tag. This is the language server helping out. Oh yeah, yeah. import tag as BS4 tag. I think since tag is the only thing, only place we're using that, let's just use tag. <clears throat> logger, I don't have a logger, okay. Uh, 
Uh, we'll just define a logger. Mm, import logging. Logger, yeah, that was right. This is actually really remarkable because I had the gist of it. I've written the code. I have enough familiarity with it, but all these little details that I've already figured out, my brain is not going to hang on to all those, right? So the the key is I just opened up the file with the existing logic that we need to change just slightly. Uh, you know, here's like one example where we lose the trail is creating an image block directly with file bytes. I lose some visibility into the image case. I want to have just a plain old object to inspect the content. And this will hopefully do it. Uh, now I need to actually uh, use this and see and test the output. So that's the next step. All I need to test is essentially this. Adapt HTML to generic blocks. That's it. Let's see if uh, Opal suggests anything here. It did. It takes a little bit because this is a much more complicated test suite. But so this is essentially my prompt here, particularly this and the class name. Let me double check that it knows that it's being prompted now. All right, so I hit return. It's going to think about it. It did come back with something a moment ago. Let's try getting def. All right, so now it's coming back with some string. Wow. All right. And this looks like it's going to go on. <laughs> All right. Joke's on me. We only need one of these for right now. Two of these is good. Actually, that's a valid test case. All right, so we've got the string. We should have one generic block, yeah. That's right, should be a rich text block. And it should equal that, very cool. All right, let's try it out. Any other assertions? Another one, it's gonna give me another test. Uh, yeah, heck, I'll go with that. Wow. Yeah, I'm doing pretty good. Just working with uh, GPT-4 to help me uh, understand my code a little bit better and write some unit tests and refactor it to use some common design patterns. And Copilot is also being uh, coming through with some uh, really good uh, test cases and other, it's writing some really good code for me. So yeah, having a good time. And let's run this test. So I'm gonna run a manage pi. So first we need to get in the poetry shell. So we have our environment. You do any uh, development, software development in Fox Bay? Web development, coding, app building, any of those kind of uh, related fields, even design and stuff, it's all kind of lumped in in my brain. They're all uh, sort of supporting skill sets. You gotta have designers, you gotta have product people coming up with ideas and making sure you're on the right course. User experience people making sure that you're solving actual problems. Quality assurance people which are super essential and increasingly essential in, in the age of large language models where a lot of our code is being written by these models and in some cases will be hard to decipher I think in those cases, we're going to be moving more towards uh, saying the inputs and outputs, sort of the defining the specification, but not the implementation. So the perspective of the engineer, kind of we step back, we say, given this input, I expect this output, make that happen. Writing, 
prompt engineering, some other skills. Okay, so how do we run this? Python, manage pi, test. Let's see if it picks up this new test. Assert, in fact, I should assert fails or assert false and something. Oh yeah, so it can't run the test without my database running, even though these tests don't use the database, of course. Colima. And up oh, minus D to run the database in the background. Yo, so I've been using this GPT-4 in a lot of ways to help me even just understand how Python works. It's uh, able to explain some nuances of the language, like the difference between raising uh, an error versus just raising, just using the raise keyword without passing the explicit error. Um, other things like the difference between append and extend uh, on list methods. So it's kind of like a personal coding assistant. How do you use design patterns? We've also been exploring a bit of these generative AI, um, you would say, I would say image tools right now, but they're also becoming more uh, prevalent for animations and videos as well as music. We are kind of exploring this domain in a practical way. Also keeping aware of some of the ethical and potential, you know, security and survivability aspects of the post LLM era. I just need to write my test against that. Make sure to drink your water. Oh no, a test. I thought I removed that. Zero equals zero, not equal to one. Ah, the length. The length. Which test is this? Conversion line 13. Okay, up here. 13. That's. Strange. Let's go ahead and debug this one. At this point, what does generic blocks look like? Thanks to help from Stack Overflow, I was able to get this Python debugging tests management, uh, like VS Code command. It could be the case that actually Copilot would have written this command for me. It turns out I'm still in this mode where I'm like, I really like Stack Overflow overall, like 90% I like it. There's 10% I don't like about it, but uh, nonetheless, it's super useful. But then these Copilot and uh, GPT are really giving me specific assistance exactly on the code I need to write. In a way, they're becoming more convenient than Stack Overflow. The situation we're in with that is that they're trained on Stack Overflow data. So it's like we might be facing a, a case where the training content starts to diminish because of the usefulness of the models, which then in turn ha have reduced training content. You know, they have to be trained on sort of human output and conversations and things like that. Hmm. So the quality of the models would then degrade. It would be like a vicious cycle. I just wanted to get a little bit of headway on this idea that had been percolating in my dreams. Came to me in a dream. Kind of, I think I probably came to me in the bathroom or something, but anyway, okay. It's... This shouldn't be happening, but uh, maybe. That's the problem. Uh, then we're just checking the image or pull quote else. Ah, yes. So we're not actually handling the default accumulated case. Okay. Um, and that's going to be, let's see, Story the accumulated rich text value is not empty. There we go. That was the missing link.
again, just co-pilot riding that. I, human in the loop here, have to like make sure code's behaving how we expect it. That's why we're writing unit tests that were also written by co-pilot, but then I'm needing to read and understand the code. So I don't think, uh, I mean, I think it's still important to understand how code works, but at least to be able to specify how it should work and then um, get good at that. And maybe then the LLMs can work out the details. I don't know. I haven't gotten to that level of uh, prompt engineering yet, but that might be a, uh, an inevitable future. So in other words, I think writing and specification is an increasingly important skill. And that means there's a lot more people who now can, in a way, program computers who are just good at writing in whatever language. It doesn't have to be English. That's another important thing. It can be any natural language. All right. I'm impatient. Uh, yeah. And just run that. Found two tests. Very fast. Simple test. Don't need a database. Run it. They passed. Okay, good. That's a good stopping point. This is nice. I like that. But actually, it didn't work. Let me think. What am I thinking? Hmm. So we'll leave that. Put that back to go. But that would be nice, I mean, to be able to pass in the test suite to run. Okay. Let me just summarize real quick. Hello. And thanks for checking out this live stream. In today's session, we were able to write some new conversion code using design patterns with the aim of increasing the visibility of the content migration scripts. I wanted to parse these CSV files with HTML blobs, get them into Python memory, and make sure everything came over that boundary from CSV into Python by creating a very simple data class that just has uh, a mapping, basically, of wagtail block types, which is our destination, and the content, which should basically be the exact HTML strings. No related parsing here, just splitting out particular types. Most of our HTML is rich text and consists of paragraphs and span tags, but there are some special cases like pull quotes and images where we need to separate those out into bespoke wagtail blocks. Having this visibility helps me be confident that when we're parsing it, we're not losing any important content. So it kind of occurred to me, maybe I could use design patterns in the assistance of GPT-4 to refactor my Python code to be more transparent and testable, which we've done today also with the assistance of Copilot. So I appreciate everyone uh, who checked out this session. This code is open on GitHub and you can see I will be creating a pull request soon. I haven't done that yet. Anyway, it was nice hanging out with everybody. Fox Bay and uh, thanks for chatting and thank you to World Cup and Yes Sir Program and Fox Bay for following. It's nice to uh, see familiar faces or at least names in the chat. I hope you're doing well and have a great day.